Get your Bibles in your hands. Say, this is my Bible. I can do what it says I can do. I can have what it says I can have. I can be who it says I can be. My mind's alert. My heart's receptive to receive the uncompromising, the unchanging, the infallible seed of the Word of God. For this is God's Word speaking to me. I said, this is God's word speaking to me. And that is where I get delivered from. Hallelujah. That's where I get my deliverance from. Amen. Hallelujah. You may be seated if you can. Glory be to God. What a precious, man, that anointing is strong up here today. My, 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 my. I got to give those ones I prayed for. I got to give you a scripture because it was given to me when I was, when they were singing that last song. Before I get into my message, it says in 2 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 5, cast down every argument and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God. Bring every thought into captivity to the obedience of Christ. That's the scripture I want you to stand on. When the enemy comes to you, you cast that thought down. You cast that thought down. Bring every thought into the obedience of the word of God. Amen. Hallelujah. Well, we're going to get into some teaching today, and I want you to encourage you to, if you've got seat belts, put your seatbelt on this morning. We're going to pick up on the message on the rise and shine, but I'm telling you, whew, the enemy has come and he is breaking loose in our world. Our world is getting darker, but God is getting lighter. Amen. Hallelujah. But we are living, I believe, we're living in the last days, and I know you've heard that for many years. But, you know, God's timing is different than our time. He measures distance and time different than we do. A day is like a thousand years to Christ, and a thousand years is like a day to God. So, but we are living in the last days, and I want to talk a little bit about that this morning. Um, let's go to 2 Timothy chapter 3. We can see where, which way our world is headed in the natural. But 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 1 says, But know this. That in the last days, perilous times will come. For men will be lovers of themselves, lovers of money, boasters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy, unloving, unforgiving, slanderers without self-control. People don't have no self-control this day and time if you're not a Christian, brutal, despisers of good, traitors, headstrong, haughty, lovers of pleasures rather than lovers of God, having a form of godliness but denying its power. And from such people, turn away from. Amen. I believe it's more important now than ever before that we know the word of God. We are rooted and grounded in the Word of God. Because last days, perilous times will come, and of course we know perilous times are here. Amen? Amen? But it's important that we stay strong in the Word. We stay strong in faith. But more importantly, we got to just not just not just be quiet about it. We got to rise and shine. Amen. For your light has come. Matthew chapter 24. Chapter 3. Once again, we're going to talk about the last days. Now, he has said, this was Jesus. Now, Jesus has said on the Mount of Olives, the disciples came to him privately saying, tell us when will these things be? Talking about the end of times. And what will be the sign of your coming and of the end of the age? And Jesus answered and said to them, this is what he said first, take heed that no one deceives you. For many will come in my name, saying, I am the Christ, and will deceive many. And you will hear of wars and rumors of wars. See that you are not troubled, for these things must come to pass. But the end is not yet. For nations will rise against nations, and kingdom against kingdom. And there will be famines. 
and earthquakes in various places. All these are the beginning of sorrows. Then they will be delivered to you to tribulation and kill you, and you will be hated by all nations for my namesake. Christians in the end times will be hated. Amen? You'll be hated because of Jesus Christ. And then, they, then many will be offended, will betray one another, will hate one another. We see an epidemic of hate in our country today. Then many false prophets will rise up and deceive many. And verse 12 says, and because lawlessness will abound. We see it every day. People getting shot every day, every night. People getting killed. Somebody got killed right here on King Street last night. Lawlessness will abound. The love of many will grow cold. But he of us, or those of us who endures to the end, shall be what? Saved. Saved. And the gospel of the kingdom will be preached in all the world as a witness to all nations, and then the end will come. Now, we know for a fact the end is coming. Near the end will be an escalation of wars and rumors of wars. And many will be deceived. Even Christians will be deceived. But we are teaching you here at Victory Life, be on guard against deception. Amen. I said be on guard against deception. Amen. I want to show you this. Um, I'm not a technical person, but I don't, some of you may have saw it. One of the top executives of Disney. A lot of people don't like to speak up against Disney. But if it's contrary to what the Word of God says, I'm going to speak out about it. But Disney's top executive come out and said that they're going to have at least by next year, at least 50 to 60% of their films and their shows for kids are going to uh, be lesbianism, gay, LBGTQ, transgender. And it says here, this is Disney promises, it says Disney promises LGBT, LGBT. Disney has promised to continue making films and TV shows with an increased commitment to diversity in its output, according to its boss, Bob Chapek. I guess that's how you say it. He says, we want to represent our audience, he said at the meeting of the company's shareholders this week. We want to tell stories that our audience wants to hear that reflects their true lives. He was responding to questions about LBGTQ characters in their films and pride events in the theme parks. There will be a transgender character, listen to this, in a future Marvel film, an upcoming superhero movie. The Eternals will introduce Marvel's first openly gay lead actor to the cinema screens. I know you've seen it because I've seen it. You already can be watching something. They show two men kissing. They got commercials now. They show men kissing. They show women kissing, two girls kissing, two boys kissing. I mean, we, there was a show on the, that showed two girls kissing each other. That is not normal. They can, they can say that is normal, and what they consider to be normal don't make it right. Yeah. It doesn't make it right. Yeah. And I believe God is calling us Christians to arise and shine, for the light has come. Yeah. And I believe in my heart that what they're doing, if you think about this, guys, this is, not, this is a battle that we're in. They're training and teaching our kids they're leading and guiding our kids and our young people in direction of darkness. That's the truth. They're, 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 they're training and leading and guiding our kids in the direction of darkness, which is going to end up in hell. There is a heaven and there is a hell. Hell is for the dark people. I mean, the darkness of this world. Amen? Go to 1 Corinthians chapter 6. I, don't, I, I like to make sure I back everything up with the Word of God. Just make sure you can see it the way I see it. 1 Corinthians chapter 6. And let me say this. When I speak out about stuff like this, it's not because I'm not coming from a position of hate. I'm coming from a position I love. I love you enough to tell you that it's wrong. I love you enough to tell you that what you're doing, you're going to end up in hell. That's, that, they, they want to say anytime we 
People come against what the, the world wants or what the, 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 the latest thing is. They, they want to say that we're hateful. We're not hateful. We love you because we're trying to teach you what you're doing is wrong. And you're sending our kids to hell is what you're doing. I know that's strong, but that's what is happening. 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 9 and 10. Do you not know that the unrighteous will not inherit the kingdom of God? Do not be deceived. Neither fornicators, nor idolaters, nor adulterers, nor homosexuals, nor sodomites, nor thieves, nor covetous, drunkards, revelers, nor extortioners will inherit the kingdom of God. What I'm talking about fits in these categories. It says we'll not inherit the kingdom of God. So we're, they're, they're trying to take our kids and, and influencing them in the way that in the spirit realm they should not go. And it's up to us as born-again Christians to arise and shine. And, it's, and we should be Christians, but we should also be speaking out what the Word of God says. Amen. There will be famines, pestilences. We have seen that last couple of years. Amen? Pestilence is a deadly or viral epidemic or disease. COVID, that falls into that category. So the end times are close. Amen? All these are the beginning of sorrows. And if you look at the word sorrows, it means birth pangs, P-A-N-G-S, but also what birth pangs means labor pains. And when a woman is expecting, you know, she's going to eventually have labor pains. And what that is, is uh, that's just signifying that there is life that's going to be brought forth eventually. But I'm here to tell you, we're living in a time of sorrows, and it is the beginning of pains. We're in labor pains now, but the one that created the miracle of life is going to come back. Yeah. We're going to receive him just like a woman receives that baby when it's born. We're going to receive Christ as our Lord and Savior, and he is coming back. Yeah. It's time that we believe what the Word of God says. Amen. Jesus said that things will get notably worse and remarkably worse at the end of this age. But these are the signals and signs that indicate the coming of our Lord and Savior. Amen? He is coming back to set up the millennial kingdom. Millennium is a period of a thousand years. We're going to rule. He's going to come back and set the, the millennial kingdom here on this earth for a thousand years. I don't tell you this to instill fear. I tell you this to instill the truth. And where the truth is, you can understand your purpose. Your purpose is to follow his word, to follow his commandments, and be obedient to what he's called us to do, to be obedient to the word. Therefore, your purpose is to walk by faith and not by sight. Don't get discouraged. Don't get in fear. Don't get in doubt. Don't get in unbelief by what you see the world happening. But you've got to remain strong in faith. I said you have to remain strong in faith. Hallelujah. Verse 14 says, And this gospel of the kingdom will be preached in all the world as a witness to all nations, and then the end will come. As the darkness increases in the last days, God's spirit and his light is going to increase in the last days. Amen? His light will shine bright in the last days. Acts 2, 17 says, And it shall come to pass in the last day, says God, that I will pour out my spirit on all flesh. All flesh. I'll pour out my spirit. There's a, there is a revival coming. There's going to be a switch and change in the atmosphere. But he's going to use us to do it. You're a called for such a time as this. You're a chosen for this season. Think about that. God put you here for this reason, for this time, for a purpose. And we're going to help, we're going to help bring in that, 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 that the revival. We're going to help bring in that new spirit that's going to come in where he's going to be poured out on all flesh. The young men shall see visions. The older men shall dream dreams. That's it. He's in the vision, still in the vision seeing. Amen. 
Hallelujah. I'm, I'm agreeing with that. He's got a, he got a great report. They, they put him through the ringer, and they can't find nothing wrong with him because there's nothing wrong with him. Amen. Hallelujah. So we're going to talk to you, and let's go back to uh, Isaiah chapter 60, verse 1 through 5. We've been on this for a, a few, few weeks now, but it says, I'm going to read it out of the Amplified Bible, Isaiah 60, verse 1 through 5. It says, Arise from your spiritual depression to a new life. Now, this was the instructions that, uh, that, that Isaiah was given to the, the Israelites in, in the city of Israel. And, and they were dealing with some of the same things we're dealing with. You know, God destroyed Sodom and Gomorrah because of the same things that we're dealing with in our nation. Don't forget that. God is not just a lamb of God. He's also a lion of Judah. <laughs> I said he's not just a lamb of God. He's also a lion of Judah. He will bring wrath and judgment when he sees time fit. It's not going, it can't get but so far. It can't, get, it can't go but so far. Arise from a spiritual depression to a new life. Shine. Be radiant. That means to be radiant with the glory and brilliance of the Lord. For your light has come. That light can give you hope in the midst of despair. Amen. It can, that light can give you joy over sorrow. It can give you faith over fear. And for in fact, darkness will cover the earth. Verse 2, darkness will cover the earth. And deep darkness will cover the people. But the Lord will rise upon you, and his glory and brilliance will be seen on you. Nations will come to your light, and kings to the brightness of your rising. Lift up your eyes around you and see. Keep your head held high. Amen. Lift up your eyes around and see. They're all gathered together. They come to you. Your sons will come from far away. Your family members will come from far away. Your daughters will be looked at that are inside. Then you will see and be radiant. I believe in the last days that the righteousness of God that's on you is going to be so radiant that you're going to draw family members to you. You're going to draw co-workers to you. Amen? And you've got to keep a good attitude because nobody wants to be drawn to somebody that has a bad attitude. Amen? Then you will see and be radiant, and your heart will tremble with joy and rejoice because the abundance of the seeds will be brought to you. That's what I'm saying. There's going to be people that's going to come to you because they see something about you. They can tell something different about you. And they want what you have. Amen. The wealth of the nations will come to you. Praise God. I, I'm going to receive that right now. The wealth of the nations will come to you. It doesn't matter how bad the economy gets. You don't fall into the category of the economy is your source. The economy is not your source. Your government is not your source. Your source is Almighty God. Amen. It doesn't matter how high gas prices get. It don't make no difference. Your source is Almighty God. He's going to supply all your needs. He didn't say half your needs. He says all your needs according to his riches in glory. But the prophet Isaiah was telling the people to arise and shine for your light has come. The same thing I'm telling you this morning. This was in contrast to what was going on in the rest of the dark world. They were dealing with some of the same things that we're dealing with. Sexual immorality, lawlessness, same thing was going on. For verse 2 says that the darkness shall cover the earth and deep darkness will control people. But arise and shine for your light has come. Amen. So my message to you today is, of course, arise and shine. Allow the glory of the Lord to manifest through you in these last days. Keep your mind renewed. You have to renew your mind every day. Every day you've got to renew your mind. I'm not going I'm not, I'm not to be, be transparent this morning. I, I very, 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 I, I very seldom have a day that, that I'm not rejoicing, I'm not upbeat and excited about. But yesterday, I'm going to be honest with you, I was just a little, just a little bit in, not in a great mood. I was a little tired, a little down, I guess you could say. I'm just being honest. Is it okay to be honest with you? I, really, I don't have days like that. But yesterday, it was just, I was just, I don't know if I was tired or what, but it was just one of them days that, you know, we came off a great uh, Bible, uh, marriage class Friday night. Man, we was upbeat, and it was good. How many of you here marriage class? Did you enjoy that? Uh, we had a good time, and uh, 
But uh, yesterday, I just kind of, I don't know what was going on. The devil's trying to work on me. But you know what? I'm here today, and I'm excited. And when I got in here this morning, and that, that music was playing, the anointing of God was coming on, man, it just lifted right off. But sometimes we do have to practice what we preach. Amen. We're not immune from tests and trials. We're not immune from the devil coming to us. Amen. But thank God that we can rely on him no matter what is going on. He has overcome. And because he has overcome, we have overcome. Amen. Romans 12, 2. Do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind that you may prove what is good and acceptable and perfect will of God. I want to be in God's perfect will. I may not have been there yesterday, but today is a new day. I put those things behind me. I press forward to the things in front of me. Hallelujah. Glory. And I'm just saying that because I'm just be, sometimes you may feel like that. You may not feel like praising God. You may not feel like worshiping God. That's when you need to praise God. That's when you need to get up off that couch and do a little shandai, handai, so go go to Sadabasi. Amen. You got to motivate yourself. Hallelujah. Get up and motivate yourself. Hallelujah. So our responsibility in the midst of darkness is to arise and shine. And the rising and shining of our light means to allow God's word to not only shine in us, but shine through us and shine around us. Let people see the light that's on you. That's what we're called to do. You can always be the light of the world in your circle. I don't hang out in your circle. Everybody has their own circle of family, their own circle of friends. But you should be the light in that circle. There should be not a light brighter than you in that circle. So think about that when you go around your friends and your coworkers. Am I the brightest light here? I might need to change my spiritual light bulb. <laughs> you know, you got these 35-watt bulbs you put in these little lamps. But, you know, you can take that out and put a 100-watt bulb in it. It shines a whole lot brighter. Sometimes you just got to ch change your spiritual bulb. Put a bright bulb. Put an LED bulb in there that creates them, what, 1,000 lumens or something? I've got a spotlight that has, I think, 800 lumens, almost 1,000 lumens. That thing's pretty bright. I can shine that in the backyard, and I can see pretty right good ways. But we need to let our light shine. Shine bright. Hallelujah. 1 John chapter 1, 5 through 7 says, This is the message which we have heard from him and declare to you, that God is light, and in him is no darkness at all. Think about that. God don't have to deal with any darkness. Because he is light. He's the father of light. If we say that we have fellowship with him, but we walk in darkness, we lie and do not practice the truth. Amen. But if we walk in the light and he, is, and he is in the light, we have fellowship with one another. And the blood of Jesus Christ, his son, cleanses us from all our sin. You don't have to be perfect, but be quick to repent. Amen. Be quick to repent. Oh, God, I messed up. Sorry. God, forgive me. Lord, forgive me. That was wrong. Forgive me, Father. And get right back on the right path. Amen. Light in the Bible, of course, refers to biblical truth, and darkness refers to error or lies. There's a difference completely between light and dark. I know you understand that. Those who walk in the light display the character of God. You should always display the character of God. Again, a genuine Christian does not walk in darkness. Your lifestyle shouldn't be in darkness. If you're a genuine Christian. Are you with me today? 1 John chapter 1. I'm going to read, uh, I'm going to read verse 5 through 7 out of the Amplified Bible. It says, This is the message of God's promised revelation, which we have heard from him and now announce to you that God is what? God is the light. He is holy. His message is truthful. He is perfect in righteousness. In him there is no darkness at all, no sin, no wickedness, no imperfection. If we say that we have fellowship with him and yet walk in darkness of sin, we lie and do not practice the truth. But if we really walk in the light, which is live each and every day in conforming to the precepts of God or conforming to the commandments of God, that should be our motivation every day. We should, we should aim to please the Father each and every day. As himself in the light, we have true unbroken fellowship with one another. 
He with us and we with him. And the blood of Jesus, his son, cleanses us from all sin. By erasing the stain of sin, keeping us cleansed from sin in all its forms and manifestations. We have an advocate with the Father. Like I said, when we do miss up, be quick to repent. Father, forgive me. And your sin is remembered no more. Amen. And that means don't let the devil come to you and remind you of your sin. Then he's going to say, well, you ain't worthy enough to do this. You're not worthy enough. That is a lie from the pits of hell. Amen. Amen. Amen? That is a lie from the pits of hell. I've come across people in the past that didn't believe they were worthy enough to be saved. <laughs> you get saved, and God's going to create the worthiness in you. That's, how, that's where your help comes from. Amen? Amen? I said, that's where your help comes from. Amen. Ephesians chapter 5. But it is, folks, it's absolutely necessary that we walk every day in the light. Amen. It's a necessity. It's essential that we walk in the light. Ephesians chapter 5, verse 8 through 10 says, For you were once darkness, but now you are light in the Lord. Walk as children of light. For the fruit of the Spirit is all goodness, righteousness, and truth finding out what is good and acceptable to the Lord. We have a spiritual checklist right here. You can always check yourself if you're walking and displaying in the fruits of the Spirit. Amen? Amen. Ephesians chapter 5, verse 8 through 10, and Marie decided the Passion Translation. It says, Once your life was full of sin's darkness, but now you have the very light of our Lord shining through you because of your union with Him. This is, listen to this. Your mission is is to live as children flooded with his revelation light. You should be flooded with the light of Christ. And the supernatural fruits of his light will be seen in you. Goodness, righteousness, and truth. Hallelujah. Goodness, righteousness, and truth. That is a checklist. You know, we have a spiritual checklist. You can do that by the fruits of the Spirit. You've heard me say that before. You know, you have a checklist when you, when you go get your car inspected. And they're checking it to make sure everything's working to be safe and nothing's going to break down or whatever. Same thing with you in your spiritual life. You have a spiritual checklist, which is the fruits of the Spirit. You should check and see if you're operating in the fruits of the Spirit. Amen? And that'll give you an idea where you stand in relationship to the Father. But the Passion Translation says, whatever the revelation light exposes, listen to this, it will also correct. You've got to allow the light sometimes to correct you. There's going to be times that you just, a lot of times you have to make adjustments. It's just small adjustments. You know, unforgiveness, bitterness, strife, jealousy, those little things. Uh, it's the little foxes that spoils the vine. And we have to be quick to make those adjustments on the inside. Because I don't want anything hindering me from the Holy Spirit. I don't want anything hindering my prayers. I don't want anything hindering my blessings from God. Amen. So I want to keep myself spiritually checked as a spiritual checklist to keep, keep myself and my adjustment right. Same thing in, a, in your marriage. Same thing in your marriage. You've got to make adjustments in your marriage. You've got to always make adjustments. You know, you don't always say the right things. You don't always, uh, you don't always do the right thing. But you've got to make adjustments. Be quick to repent, not only to God, but be quick to repent to your spouse as well. I don't know who that was for this morning. Hallelujah. God is good. And His mercy... Endures forever. This is why scripture says, Arise, you sleeper. This is the Passion Translation. Rise from your coffin, and the anointed one will shine his light into you. Some of you are spiritually dead. Or some, I won't say some of you, but some of some people are spiritually dead. Amen. And the anointed one will shine. You got to get up from your slumber. You got to get up from that laziness, that spiritual laziness. Rise up and shine, for your light has come. To be very careful how you live, not being like those with no understanding, but live honorably with true wisdom. When we are living in evil times, for we are living in evil times now, which is dark times, take full advantage of every day as you spend your life for His purpose. Don't live foolishly. And when you do that, then you can have discernment to fully understand God's will. So we don't live foolishly here at Victory Life. Amen. Verse 14 says, tells us to wake up, rise, and let Christ shine in us. 
The glory of the Lord has risen upon you. Jesus has given his life for us. His presence, the Holy Spirit, dwells on the inside of us. There's no way that we can let his, your light shine without, I mean, there's no way to let his light shine without letting that Holy Spirit shine that's on the inside of you. That is where our encourager is. That's where our helper is. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. When we can have confidence and assured and be fully confident, fully convinced, and fully persuaded that we have the supernatural resource living on the inside, and when the going gets tough, listen to this, we can call upon the name of Jesus to advocate the Holy Spirit to manifest the answers that we need. It reminds me of a story, I think I've said this before, it reminds me uh, there was a farmer and his son, and this was way back in the day when they used to, they used to farm the fields manually. They didn't have all the equipment they have this day and time. They would farm the field manually. They'd have to get out there and they would have to, you know, uh, have the horse plow, the donkey plow, whatever they used to plow the field, and they would have to walk behind it, and they was, it was a lot of manual labor involved. And uh, I remember this, uh, this father and his son, they, was, they had planted some crops, and they was getting ready to, to the crops to be manifested, and the harvest was coming. And right before the harvest, they would get ready to go out and pick it. Just a few days, a big storm came and completely ruined the whole harvest of crops that was they going to get. And back then, you know, they depended on those crops to pay their bills. That's their, that was their livelihood. And the little son looked up at his dad, and he thinking he was going to be cussing and slandering and, you know, having a fit. He saw his dad, and his dad was singing, Rock of Ages, cleft for me, let me hide. Myself and thee. That little boy grew up and said that's the best message he ever heard. When people see you, when you're going through a tough spot and you're still rejoicing, you're still praising God, you're still giving God glory and honor, no matter what, that is the best message you can ever preach. Amen? Live a life of example. Preach a life of example by the way you live. There's a lot of darkness hovering on the horizon, morally, spiritually, financially, emotionally. In so many areas, there is darkness hovering the earth. But one good thing about darkness, the darker it gets, the easier it is to see the light. Amen? The darker it gets, the easier it is to see the light. John 1, verses 4 and 5 says, In him was life, and the life was the light of God men and the light shines in the darkness and darkness could not comprehend it darkness always surrenders to light me and my wife were watching something the other day and uh it's just like mind-boggling talking about the galaxies and all the 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 the, the quasars that are billions of light years away they can actually see it on these telescopes now they've discovered they're, you know, you can see they was, they, the scientists have discovered there's more and more. Actually, what they're discovering is the galaxies in the earth is lining up with the Word of God. This is what they're discovering. But it's interesting. I don't know if you know, I, I learned what quasars was the other day. Quasar is a, uh, well, let me just read you the definition to see if you can understand. But anyway, quasar is an extremely luminous, active galactic nucleus powered by a supermassive black hole with mass ranging from millions to tens of billions of solar masses surrounded by gaseous accretion disk. Now, what that means, is, I'm going to just try to, uh, what, what we was watching on TV the other day, it was, they, you know, I think somebody probably heard, there's black holes out there in the outer space, these dark holes, and they're like a vacuum cleaner. They clean up everything in the solar system that don't need to be there or getting old or something. God has, I'll tell you what, when you start thinking about the creation that God has in design, it's just mind-boggling. But in the midst of this black hole, in the midst of this black hole, do you have that picture up there? In the midst of this black hole, the surrounding, there's a light that shines. And that light is so powerful. It's like they said it's a, it could be a million degrees Fahrenheit, that light. It's so bright. But they can see that light tens of billion light years away in the telescope here on the earth. Isn't that amazing? That's how bright that light shines. But there's so much to it. The, the, think about this. The black hole that has, they said that when a star gets close to that hole, 
or, or a planet. It says that there's the, the, so much gravity pull from that black hole that it would actually, that would actually pull that star into that hole. And it actually, it, it said it would destroy the star. In other words, it would pull it out in pieces. It would desecrate and disintegrate right in front of it before it takes it in. That's how much gravity pull is in that. But in that dark hole, they said around the rim of that dark hole, this light will shine so bright. And it will spin and cause friction. And it, it's, it, it is radiation that causes the light. It is absolutely amazing. But the point is, darkness will always yield to the light. Darkness will always yield to the light. Doesn't matter how dark the hole is, it don't matter how dark your situation is. Your darkness is going to always yield to the light. Amen. Your darkness in your life just yielded up to the Father. Amen. He will take the cares of the world on you. He says, In this world we will have tests, trials, and tribulation, but be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. Jesus is here to help us every day. We may not live a perfect life, but we can, we can present to God our imperfections, and he will remember them no more. Amen? Amen? Matthew chapter 5 says, We are the light of the world. A city that is set on a hill cannot be hidden. Nor they light a lamp and put it under a basket, but they put it on a lampstand, and it gives light to all who are in the house. Verse 16, my message to you is let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father in heaven. Amen. You are the light. God has placed you on a lampstand. Wherever you are, it's your choice how bright you shine. Wherever you are, it's your choice how bright you shine. You can hide under a bad attitude, bitterness, jealousy, strife. You can hide under negativity and your light will not shine. But shine with excellence. Shine with integrity. Shine with the love of God. Amen? So shine so bright that people ask, why are you so happy? Why are you so joyful? Because I let my light shine. I am a child of the Most High God. Hallelujah. Tell them my joy is not determined by my circumstances. My joy is determined by my citizenship. Whew. My citizenship is in the kingdom. In the kingdom, I'm required to rejoice and be glad in it. Hallelujah. I'm required to be happy. I'm required to be rejoiceful. I'm required not to let nothing get me down. Amen. As you perfect this attitude with excellence, I believe that the doors of favor will open up that you cannot see coming. And I stand on that 1 Corinthians 2, 9 says, But as it is written... A lot of times we think about this is in heaven, but it's not. This is here on this earth. Because if you read the rest of that Corinthians, you talk, it's talking about the wisdom of God, the difference between the wisdom of man and wisdom of God. But I has not seen, nor ear heard, nor have entered into the heart of man the things which God has prepared for those who love him. God has got some big things planned for you. He's got some things planned for you. Amen. Just don't accept where you are right now. You got to get out and you got to let your, you got to rise and shine and let your light be the light of the world. Our world needs light of men. They need light of people, light of women to shine bright. Let me finish with this in Romans chapter 13, verses 9 through 14. The Passion Translation says, For the commandments, this is in the Passion Translation, if y'all have that up. Romans 13, 9 through 14. For the commandments do not commit adultery, do not murder, do not steal, do not covet. And every other commandment can be summed up in these words. Love and value others the same way you love and value yourself. Love makes it impossible to harm another. Amen. You've heard Dad say many times, people not born to hate. They're taught to hate. Love makes it impossible to harm somebody else. So love fulfills all that the law requires. To live like this is all the more urgent, for time is running out. And you know it is a strategic hour in human history. It is time for us to wake up, to rise and shine, for our full salvation is nearer now than when we first believed. Night's darkness 
this is the word of God. Night's darkness is dissolving away as a new day of destiny dawns. So we must once and for all strip away what is done in the shadows of darkness. We must strip away all that is done in the shadow of darkness, removing it like filthy clothes. And once and for all, we clothe ourselves with the radiance of light as our weapon. Isn't that interesting? As our weapon. We must live honorably surrounded by the light of this new day, not in darkness of drunkenness or debauchery, not in promiscuity and sensuality, not being argumentative, complaining, or jealousy of others. Instead, fully immerse yourself into Lord Jesus, the anointed one. And don't waste even a moment's thought on your former identity to awaken its selfish desires. I like it said, and once and for all, we clothe ourselves with the radiance of light as our weapon. That means the final spiritual garment you put on should be is the righteousness of God. It is the righteousness of God that is going to protect you in these last days. Did you hear what I said? Didn't it say that? The radiance is going to be, a radiance of light is our weapon. The radiance of light is the righteousness of God. And the righteousness of God is what's going to protect you in these last days. Amen? Amen. It's not only going to protect you, but the righteousness of God is going to attract people to you. It's not going to attract people to you. It's going to attract blessings to you. And it's going to attract favor to you. So maintain the righteousness of God. And let your light shine in Jesus' name. Amen.